All right, so here's part two of the uh, week three notes. Um, we're going to start learning how to factor um, basically any trinomial that is factorable. Um, some of the trinomials are prime and they can't be factored or maybe you can just take a GCF out of them. Um, so you, you probably have learned some different factoring techniques from previous classes. Maybe you've heard of the AC method or slip and slide method or guess and check. Um, any of those methods are fine to use. I'm going to show you what's called the box method because um, it's been shown to have a lot of success with students in, in learning how to factor. Um, and it's also nice because we learned the box method for foiling in um, week two. So this is sort of going backwards. Um, so we have an example, negative 28x squared plus 16x plus 6x cubed. We need to first write it in the right order. So it should be 6x cubed minus 28x squared plus 16x. You always want to factor the GCF out first, which is 2x. So we take, pull that out and we're left with 3x squared minus 14x plus 8. Um, so now we want to look at what's inside those parentheses, the 3x squared minus 14x plus 8. We're going to draw a box and we're going to put um, the first term in the upper left hand corner of our box. It's a 2 by 2 box and the 8 or our C term, constant term, in the bottom right hand corner of our box. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply um, the 3x squared and the 8 together. Oops. So 3x squared times 8 is equal to 24x squared. Um, so what we need are uh, two terms that multiply to be this 24x squared but add up to be uh, our middle number, which should sound familiar um, because we did this before. We want it to add up to be negative 14. So that, of course, is going to be negative 12x and negative 2x. So that's what's going to go in the other two corners of the box, and it doesn't matter which way you do it. And you'll notice, if you remember from the last part there, we um, would circle these on the diagonal and we add them up and it's minus 14x, so it's our middle number. Um, for the next part, we're going to factor out the GCF of each row. So in the top row, 3x squared and negative 2x, I can take out an x. In the bottom row, I can take out a 4. Then what you're going to do is um, everything needs to work out like it did in week two where we are multiplying. So 3x, or sorry, x times what would give you 3x squared? You know, what, what, what do I need to put in the top of 3x squared? Um, and it would be 3x. And x times what is negative 2x? Well, that would be negative 2. And then if you check, it should work for the bottom boxes as well. 3x times 4, oops, that's not negative 12x it's positive 12. So we have a little adjustment. Um, what we need to do is put a negative out in front of that 4 and then everything works out correctly. Um, so you know that you can check these by multiplying it back like you did in week 2. Um, so the, uh, the terms across the top and on the left hand side are your factors. So we take those, don't forget our GCF, that 2x stays on the outside, and then we write x minus 4 times 3x minus 2. Or you could write it the other way around as well, it doesn't matter. And then you can check by foiling, or really since you have the box, you can, you've kind of already checked because um, it would have to work um, multiplying it out, but I just put in the check by foiling as an extra uh, check. So let's try some. So we notice that with these problems our a is not equal to 1, it's something other than 1. So we're going to draw a box, 2 by 2 box, and we're going to put our a term, which is 3x squared, in the top left and our c term in the bottom right. We multiply those together and we get 12x squared and we need factors 
of 12x squared to add up to 8x. Well, let's see, 3 and 4 won't work. Ah, 6 and 2, so 6x and 2x. So that's what I'm going to put in my diagonal, the other two empty boxes. The GCF of the top row is x, the GCF of the bottom row is 2. What do I multiply x by to get 3x squared? Well, that would be 3x. What do I multiply x by to get 2x? That would be 2. And you can check the bottom row. 3x times 2 is indeed 6x, and 2 times 2 is 4. So the answer to this one is 3x. And unless we pulled out a negative, we know it's plus. 3x plus 2 and x plus 2. Easy peasy. All right, B. Draw a box with four spaces in it. Put the RA, um, 21x squared in the top left, 10 in the bottom right. If I multiply those together, I get 21, or, or 210x squared. And I need the factors that are going to add up to be negative 31. Well, they're both going to have to be negative. Um, and it's pretty easy to see that it would just be negative 21x and negative 10x. So we're going to put those in our other boxes. And it doesn't matter which one you put in what. It'll work out. So in the top row I can take out an x. In the bottom row I can take out uh, only a 1. Um, but it's probably going to have to be a negative 1. We can double check that when we get ready when we get there. So x times what is 21x squared? Well that would be a 21x. And I have to multiply by negative 10 to get negative 10x. Check your bottom two. 21x times negative 1 is negative 21x and negative 10 times negative 1 is 10. So our factors are x minus 1 and 21x minus 10. Voila. So we're just going to do a whole bunch more of these. Um, if you feel like you've got it at some point, you can always fast forward the video to the end where we do um, difference of two squares and some and difference of two cubes. All right, um, C is a good one. If you multiply, well, let me let's draw the box. Start there, and we're going to have 36r squared and negative 24. We're going to multiply those together, and you're going to get a rather, rather large number. It's negative 864r squared. So here's where our calculator is going to um, be helpful. Remember, we need it to add up to negative 5. So what I want you to do is go to your y equals, clear out anything that's there, and I want you to put in, um, even though we have a negative there, that doesn't matter. Let's just put in positive 864 divided by x. Go, you only have to do this once, but hit second window to get to your table properties. Um, I don't care really where you start, zero is fine. Um, the change in value, so we want to just go up by 1, so change in table should be 1. And um, we want to change our independent to be auto. And dependent will also be auto. So once you have those settings, go ahead and hit second graph, and we're going to go to our table. Um, of course, 0 is always going to give an error because you can't divide by 0. Um, so you can change that if you want, if you want to go back to your table set and s instead start at 1. You can do that. All right, so remember that um, basically what we have in our table is a list of pairs um, that multiply to be 864. Um, you can see some of them are whole numbers, which means um, that they go into 864 evenly, and some of them aren't. So we're, we're only looking for the ones that go in evenly. Now we want the difference between the numbers to be um, negative 5. That means the numbers have to be pretty close together. So we need to go down arrow 
um, until we start getting numbers that are closer together. Because right now we're looking at like 8 and 108. Those are really far apart. Um, but it's getting better. Um, we have 16 and 54. That's getting a little closer. 18 and 48. Keep going. 24 and 36 is really getting close. See, those are only 12 apart. Keep going a little bit more. 27 and 32. Hmm. Yeah, if I subtract 32 from 27, that does give me a negative 5. So that's the pair I want right there. 27 and 32. So it's going to be negative 32R and positive 27R. Negative 32 because you want your larger one to be negative to give you that negative 5. Negative 32R in one box and 27R in the other. Alright, the GCF of 36R squared and negative 32R is uh, 4R. And then 27R and negative 24 would be 3. 4 time, 4R times 9R is going to give me the 36R squared. And 4R times negative 8 will give me negative 32R. Double check that the bottom row is correct. 9R times 3 is 27R. Negative 8 times 3, negative 24. So our solution or our factors are 4R minus 3 times 9R minus 8. Part D, 2M squared plus 17M plus 10. So we put 2M squared in the top left and 10 in the bottom right. If we multiply those together, we get 20M squared. We need pairs that are going to add up to 17M. Well, let me use the calculator again, even though 20 is not that big. So we want to change our y equals to 20 divided by x. And then go to our table, and we're looking for a pair that's going to add up to 17. Um, so 20 and 1 won't do it. Um, need to go back down. We're up too high. We're up way too high. So we want to go back into some lower ones. Uh, Ten and two is not going to give me seventeen. Five and four, four and five, two and ten. Um, none of these are giving me seventeen. Um, so the reason I wanted to use the calculator on that one is because I wanted to make sure I didn't forget any. So since this does not work, this one is going to be called prime. Just like we have prime numbers that can't be factored, we have prime um, trinomials that can't be factored. All right, E is uh, it has a GCF of A, um, so we want to take that A out, and we get eight A squared plus fourteen A plus three. Now we'll draw our box. 8a squared will go in the top left, 3 in the bottom right. Multiply them together, we get 24a squared. And we need some factors that are going to add up to 14a. This one's pretty straightforward. 12a and 2a is going to do it right. So it doesn't matter where you put them. Factor out the greatest common factor in the top row, that's 2a. And in the bottom row, it's 3. When I take that out, um, you can think of it this way, 8a squared divided by 2a is 4a, and 2a divided by 2a is 1. Double check that all the multiplication works, and it does. Don't forget your GCF on the outside, so we get 2a plus 3 times 4a plus 1. I hope you like this method as much as I do. All right, f again, we can take out a 2, and we're left with 6x squared minus 7x minus 5. 
I'm going to put the 6x squared in the top left and the negative 5 in the bottom right. Multiply that together, you get negative 30x squared, and we want the factors to add up to negative 7. Um, so, you you know, once you get some practice with these, it's going to get easier to see which, which pair works. Um, but remember, we can always pull up our calculator, clear out what we have in y equals, and this time we want to put 30 divided by x. And um, so we're trying to get uh, 7, right? Well, negative 7. Um, so 2 and 15 aren't, aren't going to work. 3 and 10, aha! 3 minus 10 is negative 7. So that's what I want. So 3x and negative uh, 10x. GCF of 6x squared and minus 10x would be 2x. GCF of 3x and negative 5 is 1. If I divide 6x squared by 2x, I get 3x. Divide negative 10x by 2x, I get minus 5. Does it all work? Let's see. Negative 5 times 2x, negative 10x, negative 5, yep. Yep, yep, yep. It all works. So don't forget your 2 on the outside, that's one of the mistakes that students often make. And then just write in what you have here in parentheses. G and H. GCF is X. So we get uh, 6x squared minus 31x plus 5. We're going to put the 6x squared in top left, the 5 in the bottom right. Multiply them together, it's 30x squared. We want factors that add up to negative 31x. No problem, that's negative 30 and negative 1x. Negative 30x and negative 1x. Nope, is it going to let me type in here? Or right in here? There we go. Alright, GCF of 6x squared and negative 30x is going to be 6x. Negative uh, 1x and 5 would just be 1. Um, then 6x squared divided by 6x is x. Negative 30x divided by 6x is negative 5. We have a little problem here because um, x times 1 is not negative 1x and negative 5 times 1 is not positive 5. So we need to adjust our sign. Um, and I made it look like a sideways t. It should be a minus 1. So we bring down that x that we pulled out and then we have 6x minus 1 and x minus 5. Doesn't matter which order those are in. Alright, h. GCF is 1, so we don't have to pull anything out. We're going to put negative x squared in the top left, 21 in the bottom right. Multiply it together, that's negative 21x squared. We want factors are going to add up to 4x. Um, so that's going to be a positive 7x and a minus 3x. Alright, the top row, uh, GCF is going to be x, and the bottom will be 3. Well, I'm going to pull out a negative 3. <coughs> negative x squared divided by x is negative x. 7x divided by x is just 7. And we check and our signs are not correct. Um, but they would be if I change this to a positive, right? Yeah. If we pull out a positive 3 instead of a negative 3, then we're golden. So x plus 3 and negative x plus 7. 
There are um, slightly different answers for this one because of that negative. Um, so just the, the way you can check that you're, if you did it a different way and got a slightly different answer, um, well the only thing that should be different are your signs. It, as long as you foil it back and you get what you started with, then you're fine. Alright, last two, we've got some double variable ones. No problem. These aren't a whole lot different than what we just learned. Can we take anything out? We can. We can take out a 2y, which is convenient because then we're only going to be down to one variable. Minus 42. Okay, so 4x squared plus 17x minus 42. 4x squared goes in the top left. Minus 42 in the bottom right. 42 times 4 is a doozy. It's negative 168x squared. And uh, you'll want to use your calculator for that. We're trying to get to 17x. So again, you want numbers that are fairly close together because 17 is not that large of a number. Y equals, clear out what you got there. We're going to put in 168 divided by x. Second graph. Um, so we want to scroll down a bit. We're trying to get to 17. Um, if we look at 6 and 28, that's close. That's 22. Aha, 7 and 24. If you subtract... Uh, 7 from 24 is 17. So uh, we want one of these to be positive and we want the larger one to be positive. So 24x and uh, minus 7x. Alright, top row I'm going to take out a 4x and the bottom row I'm going to take out a negative 7. And we'll see if that sign it works or not. Um, so I'm left with an x when I take out 4x from the top left and I'm left with a 6. Uh, 24x divided by 4x is 6. Check that all the signs work and they do. So we're going to have 2y times 4x minus 7 times x plus 6. All right, last one of these bad boys. This one we can't take out one of the variables, so we're stuck with two variables. Um, we can, however, take out, no, we can't take out anything. Um, so we have 54a squared in the top left and negative 8b squared and the bottom right. If you multiply those together you get negative 432 a squared b squared. Now we want the factors that are going to add up to 39 a b. You better believe that we're going to need our calculator here. Well we won't say need, we'll say we'll find it very useful here. So it's uh, 432 divided by x. Remember, don't worry about the negative because you're going to adjust for that anyway. Um, second graph. All right, 39 is um, a fairly big number. Well, not terribly big, but um, a little bit bigger than some of the other ones we were looking at. So like. 4 and 108 is obviously, you know, if you subtract those, you're going to get 104 or negative 104. That's still a little too big. So we want to go down 8 and 54. See, 54 minus 8 would be 46. That's really close. How about 9 and 48? Yes, if I do 48 minus 9, I get uh, 39. So that's what we want. 9, A, B, and... 48ab. But we also want them to both be, or we need one of them to be negative. And um, we want the larger one to be positive because it's going to add up to positive 39ab. 
So 48AB and negative 9AB. The GCF of the top row, um, 54 and 48, you can take out uh, 6, 6A. And if the bottom row I can take out, I'm going to take out a negative and we'll, we'll see if that, that works. If it not, then I'll change it. Um, all we can take out is a B. So 54A squared divided by 6A is 9A. 48AB divided by 6A is 8B. Check our signs. Looks like everything works. So it's 9A plus 8B times 6A minus B. Okay, so those are the probably the hardest ones, um, but you can see that it's not that difficult. So we have some mixed practice here with what we've learned so far. Um, so keep in mind, no matter what type it is, you want to start by taking out the GCF. And this one I can take out a 2. No, I can't. Take that back. I can't take 2 out of 7. Um, so I'm just stuck with uh, the two in the front, so we're going to have to do the box method. 2x squared in the top left, negative 72 in the bottom right. If I multiply that together, I get negative 144x squared. Now we're trying to get factors that are going to add up to be 7x. So let's bring up the calculator again. And y equals, I want to change this to 144. We won't worry about the negative just yet. Second graph. Um, we're trying to get to 7, which is relatively small. Let's see, 8 and 18 is 10, if you subtract them. 9 and 16, um, 16 minus 9 does give you 7. So it's going to be 16x and minus 9x. In the top I can take out a 2x, in the bottom I can take out a negative 9. So when I take out the 2x I'm left with uh, x and an 8. Make sure the signs work and they do, so our answer is 2x minus 9 and x plus 8. Part B, um, can't take out any GCF, so again we're going to be doing the, the longest factoring method there is, the box method. But out of all the methods of, of doing these problems, it's the shortest one that I've found. So this is the shortest of the longest methods. Multiplying those together, you get 360x squared. And we're going to want to use our calculator to find factors that add up to be negative 49x. So, let's see. y equals, change that to 360 divided by x. Second graph. And we want 49. Um, 6 and 60 is 54. That's close. 8 and 45, still too large. And then, ah, 9 and 40. So it's going, they, they should both be negative here because um, we want to add up to a negative 49x. So negative 40x in the top right and a negative 9 in the bottom left. UCF of 24x squared and minus 40x is 4x. GCF of negative 9x and 15 is 3. 24x squared divided by 4x is 6x. Negative 40x divided by 4x is a negative 10.
All right, um, so we have some problems here. What have we done wrong? Forty-nine, uh, forty-three, six times three. Okay, the problem is um, twenty-four and forty actually have a common or greatest common factor of eight. So that's going to change these guys. Um, so we're going to get a 3x here and um, 5, negative 5 here. Um, so let's see now if that's any better. Almost, um, we just need to make this a negative 3. That way everything multiplies out the way it's supposed to. So we have 8x minus 3 times 3x minus 5. And voila. Alright, C um, doesn't look like a perfect square trinomial. There's no GCF, so I'm going to go ahead and do the box method. Box method will work even if it is one of those things. So 2A squared and 5B squared. Multiply that together, you get 10A squared B squared. And we need to add up to 11AB, so that's going to be 10AB plus 1AB, that gets me 11AB. Greatest common factor of 2A squared and 1AB is going to be A. Greatest common factor of 10AB and 5B squared is 5B. 2A squared divided by A is 2A. And AB divided by A is just B. Double check that everybody multiplies, and it does. Um, so you get 2A plus B times A plus 5B. Alright, D is one that we need to put in the correct order. So it should be X squared minus 7X plus 12. But our A on this one is 1, so we don't need to go through the whole box method. Remember, we can just write it here, put our x's in. What multiplies to be 12 and adds up to be negative 7? Well, that would be 4 and 3, but we need them both to be negative. Those are much easier. Hopefully you recognize E as a perfect square trinomial, where the m squared is the perfect square of m, 100n squared is the perfect square of 10n. If you multiply that together and doubled it, you'd get 20mn. Okay, so that's just our check. Uh, same thing with f. x squared y squared is the perfect square of xy. 49 is the perfect square of 7. So let's make sure that the middle number um, is the the double of those two multiplied together. Um, so 7 times xy is 7xy. I double that, I get 14xy. I just kind of make sure I make this negative, um, make it negative 14xy. So if you recognize perfect square trinomials, it'll save you a lot of, a lot of work. Um, so G, we can uh, factor a GCF of 2x out, and we're left with 3x squared minus 14x plus 8. Now, since our A is not 1, we need to use the box with 3x squared in the top right and uh, 8 in the bottom right. So we multiply those together, we get 24x squared, and we want negative 14x, so that's going to be negative 12x and minus 2x. That adds up to be negative 14x. Alright, GCF of the top row is x, 
and GCF of the bottom row is, I'm going to take out a, four, a negative 4, and if I have to adjust, I will. Um, 3x squared divided by x is 3x. Negative 2x divided by x is minus 2. Check that everything works. Make sure you bring down your GCF. We have x minus 4 times 3x minus 2. <coughs> Um, H we'll want to put in the right order to start off with, and you notice we'll have an x to the fourth here, which is a little different than what we're used to. Um, now, x to the fourth is the perfect square of x squared, and 1 is the perfect square of 1. But if I multi multiply these together, I just get x squared. Doubled is only 2x squared. So this is not a perfect square trinomial. Um, we could hope for maybe, um, well actually we don't even have to use the box because our a is 1. So if we look at this, we have x squared is going to go in each one of these. And the only choice we have for 1 is either both negative or both positive. But no matter what way we do it, we're never going to get 16x squared. So this one is actually prime. It cannot be factored. And that's not just because it has the x to the fourth in there, because some of those do factor. Um, it just doesn't factor. All right, difference of two squares is a nice easy one to do. So if you recognize a problem as being the difference of two terms that are perfect squares, um, then your factoring is easy. It's uh, the first, the, the square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term times the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. So x squared minus 36 is x plus 6 times x minus 6. 49m squared minus 1 will factor as 7m plus 1 and 7m minus 1. 169a squared minus 49b squared factors as 13a plus 7b times 13a minus 7b. You'll notice that they're exactly the same except for the sign. y squared minus 1 16th is going to be y plus 1 fourth and y minus 1 fourth. 1 fourth squared is 1 16th. Don't change the order of this. For 1 25th minus p squared, it's going to be 1 fifth plus p and 1 fifth minus p. Um, for f, if I switch this around, um, now we could have changed the order in E. We could write it as minus p squared plus 125 as long as it's the same problem. But you can't just switch the 125 and the p squared. So for this one, if I write it as instead 1 minus 9t squared, it's the same thing, right? Um, it just, oh, I can't get rid of my scribble. Um, it's just written the other way. So now we can see that this would be 1 plus 3t and 1 minus 3t. 49y squared plus 1 is prime. It's not the difference of two squares. It's the sum, and that can't be factored. n to the fourth minus 16 would be n, n squared plus 4 and n squared minus 4. m to the fourth minus 1 would be m squared plus 1 and m squared minus 1. Oops. If we go back to h, the n squared minus 4 actually can be factored more. That's n plus 2 and minus 2. So the answer would be n squared plus 4 times n plus 2 times n minus 2. Same thing with i. Um, m squared minus 1 is m plus 1 times m minus 1. So your final answer is m squared plus 1 times m plus 1 times m minus 1. 
All right, so the sum and difference of two cubes is simply a memorization one. There's no like technique um, other than finding out what your if, what your a and b are. Um, you find a and b and you just plug it into the formula. Um, it's not like the box method where you go through step by step and um, and work it out. There's no step by step really. It's just find your um, A and B and plug them in. So memorize these two formulas and you'll notice that they're very similar. The only thing different between the two of them are these two symbols and these two symbols. Um, I just remember it by the first one's going to be the same as what the problem starts with and then the second one's always going to be the opposite of that and everything else is the same. So for piece cubed plus one, my a is the cube root of the first term, so it's p, and my b is the cube root of the sec second term, that's one. So it's going to be p plus one, and then you just plug everything else into that formula. a squared would be p squared, a times b would just be p, and then one squared is one. Now I do have one mistake, this, one, this plus here uh, should actually be minus. Remember, it's always the opposite of the one you start with. 27y cubed is the cube of 3y. And of course, 1 is the cube of 1. This one's going to be minus square the first term, 9y squared. Multiply them together, it's going to be plus 3y. The sign is plus because it's always the opposite of what you start with. And then the last one's always positive of the last term squared. C, um, the cube of y, or the cube root of y cubed is y, and the cube root of 64z cubed would be 4z. This one's plus. Alright, so then we're going to have y squared minus 4yz plus 16z squared. D, we can take out a GCF of 6, and we're left with r cubed plus uh, 64, I think. Let me double check. Nope, 27. Alright, so it is a perfect cube. Um, we're going to have the 6 on the outside and then r plus 3 times r squared minus 3r and plus 9. I have these memorized because I've done them, I've practiced them. You can practice them and memorize them too. E would be ab minus 2 times a squared b squared plus 2ab and then plus 4. F um, has a GCF of 3, so we'll take that out. And then we're left with 8x cubed minus 27y cubed. Both perfect cubes. This is the perfect cube of 2x. This one of 3y. It's subtraction, so we're going to keep the subtraction. The first term squared is 4x squared. Multiply these two together, you get 6xy, but it's going to be positive because that's what the formula says. And then the last term squared is 9y squared. In a graded review, um, hopefully you recognize 1 as a perfect squared trinomial. It's x plus y, all squared. Uh, 2, a is 1, so we can try this one. Um, we need factors of negative 2 that add up to x. Well, that would probably be positive 2 and minus 1, right? C, we can take out the GCF, or no, not C, but 3. And we're left with x squared minus 25. That's the difference of two squares. So that's x plus 5, x minus 5. 
4 is a factor by grouping. Take the GCF out of the first two. We're left with x plus 3. GCF out of the bottom two, or last two. Um, we're left with x plus 3. So it's x plus y times x plus 3. Or if you like, x plus 3 times x plus y. x squared minus 2x plus 4. What multiplies b4 but adds up to be negative 2? Hmm. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, but there's no way to get negative 2 with those. And 4 times 1, um, we could get 3 with that or 5, but not negative 2. So this one's actually prime. And 6, um, does this one have, it does have a GCF, a 9x can come out, and then we're left with 2x squared minus 7x plus 1. So this would be box method. We have 2x squared in the top left plus 1 in the bottom. Multiply those together, you get 2x squared. You want the factors that are going to add up to negative x, 7x. Well, the only factors of 2 are 2 and 1. There's no way to ever get uh, 7x. So we're not going to say that the whole thing is prime because you can take out a GCF. But this, the inside, this part, is prime. But what I circled here, the 9x times 2x squared minus 7x plus 1 is your answer. Some of them, when I say factor, all you can do is factor the GCF. 7, we see those are perfect cubes, so that's going to be 3ab plus 2 times the square of the first term, which would be 9, 9a squared b squared. Multiply them together, and it's going to be minus 6ab and then the square of the last term. Eight, um, we can factor out a GCF, three XY. We're left with four X squared plus 81. Those are perfect squares, but it's not a difference of perfect squares, so that's it. That's all we can do with that one. Nine, we can pull out a two and we're left with x cubed minus 64. So that's the difference of two cubes. x cubed being the cube of x and 64 being the cube of 4. So square the first term, add the product of the two terms, and then add the square of the last term. 10 has a GCF of 4x squared y. And then we're left with x squared minus 2x minus 15. Um, since it's the a is 1, we can look at it um, this way, the short method. Um, Negative 15 has factors of 5 and 2, and if we make the 5 negative, then we add up to negative 2x. So that's it for that. That's it for everything in this, um, this lesson. It's a long lesson, I know. I hope you took breaks, and best of luck.